save it to YouTube, which is stupid of me, but hey, I expected it to be available on Twitch a little bit longer than it was that long. Do I have anything on here? Oh yeah, that's one I used at one point to do some stupid stuff with. May as well hop over there. I don't even remember what was on here. Oh, it was a par 5 that I was goofing around with. To show some different design ideas. Well shoot, I'm going to play it once. Oh, we had switched it to tropical at the last minute. I remember this. Because we were doing some mountains. Some mountain work. I'm just curious. I'll, I'll hop out of this in a second. But hey, I'm making a video for you, so you can at least let me fart around with something for a minute. I think we made it in such a way. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, is that it was reachable over here. Yeah, because we were playing with some different bunkering ideas and splining and that. Yeah, screw that mess. Yes, I don't care. But I think the other one is the one we were using, New Course 432. Because initially I tried to use some numbers and it came back with a profanity filter somehow. And I was rather surprised because it was just random numbers. Alright. Oh, we didn't save any of the stuff we did. That's fine. So, this was basically going to be about um, how we did the rock faces, how we did advanced edit bunkers, those kinds of things. So, let's start with the rock, rocky faces. Um, I'm going to find a place that already has some good texture already in place. We'll just do it right along here. Now, what I did in Iceland is I did a rocky shelf. You don't have to do a shelf. You can do it not with a shelf but you all know that if you take something and you raise it drastically that it's going to change the texture I mean that's obvious and of course the undo button oh it did work hooray but what you may not know is that you can change it even further than that even by doing little things now here's how I did it I used this shape a lot and kind of just you know came after it like so but you have to be careful because it can can it can uh, create humps instead of rock like formations and rocks don't always look like humps so a lot of times you want to come in and really get a little more aggressive but also um, if you just take it and go over a large space, you'll end up with rounded edges. And rounded edges are not really what you want. You can get away with them sometimes, but they aren't really going to accomplish what you are wanting to accomplish. Like I said, I used this brush mostly. And I'm going to make this video a little shorter than the other one. Because I think I have a better idea of how to say what I want to say. And the other one I was just kind of shooting from the hip. <coughs> The other brush that uh, worked pretty well for this, I mean really any of them would, except for these, I would stay away from those, is uh, this one. I did use this one for some of the uh, rocky areas in the distance. Uh, the reason you want to be careful with this one is it can create some odd little crevices you're not expecting. Um, and you'll also notice that I'm raising. I'm not doing any lowering at this point. 
if you do lowering when you're trying to do this, um, you're going to end up having to flatten out this near side, and that can get a little dodgy. I mean, you can do it, but uh, I wouldn't recommend it. I'd just go with raising. Ooh, I think I got a little aggressive there. Yeah, I did. See how that's like a hump? You don't want a hump. You want some sharper edges. Um, I'll also tell you, the, the ground that I did most of my work on was flattened, and then I kind of um, created the landscape myself. You can do lowering if you're... Um, paying attention and you're doing it all within the rock face itself and not around the edges it works okay but you got to be careful because like this one here is going to create another little rounded hump here that's not really what I'm after <clears throat> but because we want this to be an edge I'm going to go to flatten and I'm going to raise this side of it up like so and it'll all make sense in a minute because really, it was kind of an outcrop that we were going for, or the side of a little mini cliff, rather than uh, big humps of rocks. I'll put it that way. Like if you wanted this to be part of a hole, you'd want one side of this to be a little flatter, obviously. Bum, bum, bum. lighting is terrible too but that's all right and then down here you'd probably want it to be a little flatter too you'll notice I'm not holding the button down that is because I'm trying to get a more even look and if you hold it down it won't be even hang on a second yes Emmeline what may I do for you uh, is this a video? yeah we're making a video little girl What kind of game, hon? Uh, in that drawer. Go ahead. Thank you. Like in that over there on the <clears throat> Go ahead, hon. <laughs> anyway, if you want to get it really fun, you come in here after the fact and kind of get get jiggy with it. We're not done by any stretch, so don't feel like this is all you have to do is raise the land. You'll notice I'm already getting a good rocky texture from this. But, if you were to do the same thing in an area where you didn't already have a rocky texture, like you did it uh, right here. Mm -hmm -hmm. It's going to change the texture a little bit, yeah. but that's not really tremendously helpful. Hey, Emmeline, you may certainly do that, but go do it over there, okay? Let Daddy finish. I'm not going to get real fancy here. I'm just going to show you. Now, you want to make this look really rocky. First, I'm going to change the lighting a little bit here. <clears throat> so this makes a little... It looks a little better. Oh. Oh. Well, we got clouds in the way. Let's put the sun... Let's get some shadows. I don't know. We'll just put it there for now. But let's get that rock uh, surface to really pop here. Um, I had best luck with these oak trees. Just shrink them down. Yeah. Wow. What? What Why is that I? acting all windy? Emmeline, I'm busy, okay? And then you uh, go to advance edit and you just go, goodbye, tree. Wait, hello. It's nice to see you, tree. Nope. Goodbye. Now watch what happens here when we do this. Whoa. 
because what you're doing is like if this tree is above the ground <clears throat> and I were to just plant it over here you know that the ground is going to change slightly not much but a little bit you know wherever you plant something see how that changed a little bit I'll do it over here it changes a little bit the same thing is going to happen but now the tree is not going to be there and um, and the undo button is not working isn't that great when the undo button just fails but it's also because you're planting it lower to the ground it it is creating a, a denser shadow look how dark you can make this if you really want to I mean you can make it almost black if you really get after it but even on this area over here where where we don't already have the rocky texture yeah that's stupid man so see we don't even have a rocky texture but again by planting some trees and this works for brush and other things too even over here on a flatter area <clears throat> If you just want to change the texture to be a little more wild and woolly, just plant some stuff underneath there and away you go. Not a problem. <clears throat> well, that's a quick way to do a rock face. Now you can get more intricate, you know, with the sculpting itself, or you can, uh, if you have a good spot for it. it's got to fit just right otherwise it looks out of place but if you can get one of these to you know give you a little extra outcrop you know you can bury these in here halfway a little bit it works pretty well well that's why I'm doing this man uh, some folks had asked how I accomplished it on the course I did in Iceland so I was showing the other thing they had questions about were advanced edit bunkers <clears throat> a couple of things about advanced edit bunkers first is you really need the ground where you're going to put the bunker to be shaped somewhat like you want it to be um, in the end so let's say we want to uh, do a little bunkering in through here again I'm gonna do a little flattening <clears throat> and there's a reason for that you can't you can't modify advanced edited bunkers uh, the same way you do regular ones like if you try to do a flatten inside of it you're gonna totally ruin it and I'll show you that in a minute but let's say we want to come in here um, and have a fairly extensive bunker with rough advanced edit edges well here we'll just pretend that we've got a fairway coming through here And there will be a bunker right in that little hollow area, which is towards the uh, upper right of the screen right now. <coughs> Emmeline Catherine. Shh. You go ahead and play, but I told you I'm doing this right now, all right? So create surfaces, bunkers, go to brush. Uh, you can do this with any shape. Um, I'm going to use this one just because I've had good luck with it. Now, a couple other things about advanced edit bunkers. <clears throat> when I select this bunker you see it's got that blue outline and as I move it along the ground it moves up and down a little bit but it follows the line of the ground when you press advanced edit it will no longer do that I'm now like under the ground or if I come over here I'm now floating in the air which means you may try to put your bunker down and it may not show up exactly where you think it will so if if you're going to move elevation go ahead and back out you see how it moved down and then go back into advanced edit if i come over here and i and i back out it it pops up on top oops sorry the outline pops up on top so once you go into advanced edit just remember if you change elevation it's not going to look right and once you get into advanced edit you can you know move this however you want but don't expect this shape to be exactly what shows up and I'll show you uh, what I mean here when I press this down it's not gonna look just like that watch it's got that general shape but the edges are gonna be rough and look how deep that bunker is 
if I were to take this shape and put it right next to it here just with a standard bunker it's going to be the shape that I want it's going to be that shape and it's going to sit just barely in the ground at all and you're going to be able to come in here and uh, <clears throat> go to sculpt flatten you know and you could come in here and do all kinds of work again you don't ever want to just leave it totally at zero otherwise it'll just sink into the ground but you could just do a quick little pass like that and you get a nice you know it's in the ground a little bit if I were to use flatten over here watch I'll, I'll raise it like three feet and I'll flatten it it did next to nothing if I go in here and I try to do a flatten like you would in a normal bunker you know so I'll raise it yeah let's just say seven eight inches and do a flatten it's actually going to create a hole it's going to just go down and down and down and down and down it just doesn't work oh yeah you said undo only works once on PS4 that's so great that blows chunks is what that does I think I'm just going to delete that try again uh, hang on I want to work with something I know what I'm working with here so when you do advanced edit bunkers you want to make sure the ground is ready for them you also want to make sure that you're not setting them um, basically you want to have if you want to be able to see them you need to have that one side higher than the other a little bit so you can't modify them as easily after the fact you can and I'll show you how in a second but if you want it to have a tilt from this side to this side the ground better already be doing that so let's create again surface bunkers I'm doing I'll just shrink this down I would also shrink your shape before you start doing the advanced edit otherwise it just doesn't work as well I can't explain it it just doesn't but now when I put it down see it's already kind of got the tilt that, that I want now how can you make uh, the advanced edit bunker look a little better well you can't use the flatten you really have to go to raise and what you've got to do is um, you can push down this side a little bit if you need to but you better be pretty careful instead you need to come in here wherever you feel like you need to make it a little flatter and actually do a raise and you can go you can just drag it across but I'd be careful doing that because you're gonna end up with ridges that you don't want so you kinda have to just go a little at a time and some areas will have to be raised more than others um, I do like the fact that it does give you you know whatever side of your bunker is gonna have the big lip it's on there and it's on there very nicely you don't have to do a lot of work to it you can still do large moves on these like I can bring this part up if I want to but you're not gonna ever be able to get this side of the bunker totally even with the inside lip you can come close uh, through a lot of work but you're not going to be able to just get it flat like you can with a regular bunker so be careful with that here's another little thing about advanced edit bunkers that will drive you crazy I'm just gonna throw another one over here uh, I'll just choose a, a regular shape like this advanced edit meh, meh. <clears throat> you know I'm gonna get some weird edges again I'm, it's gonna sink down but watch what happens if you try to no I don't want that if you try to add add on to an advanced edit bunker using a regular bunker well here I'll use a funky shape so you can see it Emmeline can you quiet down just a little bit watch this see how it has these humps over here advanced edit bunkers and regular bunkers do not play well together at all you're gonna end up with 
this kind of thing. And if you try to modify this uh, with flattening of any sort, it, it really doesn't make it any better because they're reacting totally differently. Now, what causes this? I don't have the slightest idea. I mean, if, if Paul, if you watch this, you know, you can sure tell us, Mr. HB Paul or somebody, but it's going to get screwy no matter what you do. Um, the nice thing that I like about the Advanced Edit Bunker O2 is you do get some weird things like that, um, you know, the edges and that, but man, they just, they combine really well, I think, to create some interesting shapes. Um, and you can get some very interesting edges off of them. Oh, stop. That's not what I wanted. So, that's too big. I used them exclusively on uh, the Iceland course I did. Um, I had not used them much before, but I had seen them used by somebody else. Um, they are a very easy way to get a rough look um, if you're going for an older style course or if you just want um, well for instance you can get this kind of edge if you work really really hard using brushes uh, and what I mean by that is you'd have to you'd have to lay down a brush like so and then come in with, uh, well, who? Here, we can use this. Because this one works pretty well for doing this kind of thing. And you could get some different edges, but look at that. It rounds them out. No matter what you do, it rounds your edges out for you. You can try really hard, but you're not going to have the same kind of raggedy edges that you do with the advanced edit. And once you create these raggedy edges using... Em Emmeline. Holy Hannah. Your toys are playing hard, aren't they? So that's my four-year-old. She's having a good time. But once you do this kind of thing, and I'm totally for doing it. In fact, one thing you can do if you're doing a big bunker is I like to take this shape sometimes and just get a little crazy. <clears throat> but now that you've got that down, you've got to find a way to sculpt it in such a way that those edges look natural. And I'm here to tell you, I did that on uh, Turuero and it is not easy because you have to get some hard edges like so and get really finicky along the outside and then go back and raise this side and lower this side again you gotta figure out how deep your pan's gonna be how much you want the sand to run down into your pan um, Then you got to start raising it like a foot just to keep it from getting deeper because of the way sand interacts with uh, the sculpting tool brushes. And then once you do that, you got to go back in. Whereas with advanced edit, you can accomplish a lot of this right out of the gate without having to do a whole lot of work um, to get the look you want. Now, granted, doing this kind of bunker can be really awesome because, you know, just where it's sculpted, you can see you get some really cool edges off of it. But I didn't have to do much of anything to this one to get, you know, that raggedy edge look. And, um, you know, you just take some grass. And my brain is shutting down. I'm pretty tired. You know, you take some grass and come in here. Hang on. I'm not used to this controller either when I'm doing this. Rotate. Oh, that's not what I wanted to do. And you know, you can really raggedy up your edges if you want to. The other thing that I put in the video that is gone now is just a little hint on splines. Um, there are a lot of guys who want to use splines to do bunkers, but I will tell you from, and this is just my experience, but um, trying to draw a bunker shape using a spline 
on a normal size bunker like somebody say well I want to have a bunker that's got some fingers hey look at this this will be a cool shaped bunker well look I mean it just gave you weird edges it didn't give you a lot of fingers and stuff so what you do is instead you say okay that's the kind of shape I want for my bunker you just lay down one and sorry I'm using a lot of waypoints here just lay down one line come back in you say okay well I want it to kind of also shape up this way over here and you don't have to use those that many waypoints it really doesn't matter now you can get kind of fun with this uh, let's say you want to have a little finger come in here well just remember that splines are gonna have a shape around them and instead of trying to draw a shape, instead build the bunker a little at a time with your splines. If that makes any kind of sense. And you can get as crazy as you want, but like I said, just... Yeah, I mean you can get crazy with the with the with the splines. I guess what I'm saying though is don't try to draw a shape necessarily. Instead, build it out. You know, figure out kind of what you want the general idea to be, and then build the shape out from there. And if you want to really um, get silly, then what you can do is you know do a little less than what you think you should do, and then come back into it and uh, change the, the, the width of it and it'll get you know bigger or smaller or whatever you want <clears throat> but guys get frustrated because of drawing them I will say one thing I've been playing with on a course that I'm messing with now is um, well here let's just do this Uh, let's pretend we got a fairway coming through here. It's going to dip down over here. Actually, there's the makings of a cool hole right here. If, if, if you wanted to take the time to make one, there's about three cool holes right there based on the way the, the hills are, but that's okay. Um, but let's say you're going to have a hole that's going to come up here and then dog leg down here to a to a bunker that's a little I'm sorry to a green that's a little recessed or whatever um, but you throw down your uh, fairway and no this is not how I do my fairways so please don't be like oh look this is how Reed does the silly fairways usually when I do fairways there's a whole lot of or how I used to do them anyway was a whole lot of just you know this is generally where it's going to be and then I'd come in and kind of determine the angle on how it was going to turn and just build it with uh, ovals or circles or you could even if you're good at it you could come in here and very nearly draw the shape that you wanted like that and you'd have to go back in and smooth those edges out but you know I don't need to worry about putting shapes together you can just take this and draw whatever shape you want as long as you're willing to put in the uh, effort to fix your edges up but using spines to do more traditional bunker shapes but in or right next to the fairway like uh, what dear I love you too hon good because, and I'm sure everybody knows this by now, but splined bunkers do not create um, little outlines of rough if you put them in a fairway. Hey, my daughter loves me. It's all good. I just, you know, when she turns 13, hopefully she says the same thing, right? But I have been messing with using this idea more in the in the fairways, and even of using more uh, geometric shaped bunkers like this, but more of them. 
but for the guys who want to run their bunkers from fairway to rough I'd suggest trying to use splines because otherwise you end up with that little outline there that you don't ever want but anyway with splines on bunkers don't don't try to just draw a shape I mean you're, you're gonna cause yourself headaches just come in and kind of give it one of these and then come in and say okay I want a finger over here how do you get a finger well this kind of shape works pretty well usually to get you started and then you can come back up little T shapes or or uh, little lollipops if you want to get crazy like that but that'll give you plenty of wacky jigsaw shaped bunkers as opposed to trying to draw them out but anyway that's just a quick thing uh, on the advanced edit bunkers and uh, creating rock shelves like this we might do one more of those let's just do that really fast in case Daddy? people want to see again hang on babe no honey uh, let's do it let's do it right here so we'll say that this is going to be the high side and this over here is going to be the low side no you don't have to do it this way I mean you can raise it up and then you know go to town on it or whatever you want to do we'll pretend that there's just going to be a little and I am picking a place where the uh, ground already has a little bit of that effect going on now would be the time if you wanted to do any lowering you certainly could on the on the inside like this of where you want your rocks but uh, you don't have to you can really just come in here can I talk to you right now? no why? because I'm still making the video and you need to be patient which is what I said earlier silly girl What did I just say, hon? Can you be patient? No. No? <laughs> Who raised you? So you yeah. can't I did not. Yeah. No, I raised a patient little girl. Who waits That's for her daddy. No. Mm -hmm. Not even close. Yes. You're closer. Please be quiet, honey. Do you see this right here? This is a microphone. And the people who are watching can all hear you. Oh, let me hear. No. You're going to say hi? Uh -huh. Go is ahead. it mommy? No, it's not mommy. Is it going to be Jeffers? No, it's not your grandma either. Who is it? Well, it's this guy, Jeremy, and probably some other people too. Are you talking to him? Mm-hmm. Him. Well, you are right now. Uh, does he like me? Probably. Okay. Ask him. Say, Jeremy, do you like me? Go ahead. Do you like me? No, lean over here and say it. Jeremy, do you like me? Well, let's watch. He'll 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 type it up over there. You know what? He's probably gonna say, "No, you stink." <laughs> do you think that's what he'll say? No. No. All right. I think he will say yes. You think he'll say yes? Is he, is he not saying yes yet? Oh, he said, you're very cute indeed. What do you think about that? That's good. Is that very nice of him? Mm -hmm. He loves my dollies and my toys. Oh, he does? He likes your dollies and your toys? I was going to tell him that. Here, wait, that. wait, lean over here. Lean over here. I want you to say, shut up, Clint. Clint? Yeah, say shut up, Clint. Clint. <laughs> Clint. That's all you get. <laughs> Clint. Can I talk to you? You already are. Uh, uh, do you like my toys and my anyway. dollies? Yes, they they very much like your toys yeah. and your dollies. Do you like my toys and my dollies? That's enough. Okay, that's well, enough. Well, we say yes. 
Anyway, but it's not that hard to get um, to get a rocky look. Jeremy, tell you, me you you know she you does, Claire. Like my toy. <laughs> tell me if you like it. My uh, this one is going to be a salesperson when she grows up because I swear she could walk into a room and just start talking and you know telling you stories and before you know it you've signed papers for something she shook your hand she left she smiled and you're sitting there going what did I just buy what happened but that's what's gonna happen to her I think as she gets older but anyway this is just a quick how to get you know and when I did um, uh, Iceland, by the way, I tried to get very aggressive to get some of those shadows like you see on that rock area over there. The one thing you got to be careful, though, are these humps. You don't want humps. Humps don't look like rocks. Humps look like humps. At least not stony rocks. I mean, they look like rocks, but they just look like boulders. And boulders not really what you're headed for doing it this way anyway. Oh, something else you can do cool to help uh, maximize the effect here is once you get those in. Uh, Emily, 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 you need to stop now, honey. Mm -hmm. Okay? Is rocks aren't going to stick out and look like rocks if they're just surrounded by more rocks. So what you can do is, and I know this is a little tedious, but come in. Give yourself a few smooth areas and then uh, use some green to uh, to set off where you want your stones to be. And I'll show you what I mean. Hang on. I'm sure you already know what I mean, but I'm going to do it anyway. Because it's my video and shut up. <laughs> but like right here, let's say I wanted this area to kind of come down smoothly. No, there's nobody named Marley, hon. Uh, what's his name? Well, his name right now is... Shush. Because I'm making a video for a minute. But why is he Shush? I don't know. That seems like a good name for him. That would be not. Okay. I'm going to call him Prettiest. You're going to call him Prettiest? Oh, that seems... I think he'll like that. That seems reasonable. Well, what you don't seem to understand, dear, is that he can hear you right now. Uh, prettiest, I mean, I mean, <laughs> I feel like... I don't know which one of you he's calling, she's calling prettiest, but somebody just got a new name, so I hope you appreciate it. Do you like pretty names? Of course they like pretty names. But that's boys like pretty names? Some boys like pretty names. The guy with the picture? I don't know who that is. Maybe. That guy. Well, that's a picture for Daddy's guy. So, yeah, Daddy likes the pretty names. Good job. So, I here's what I mean. Like By using green to set it off. Please, I a little bit. Because okay. you're going to have grass and moss and different okay. stuff that's growing Please, in the rocks. Like so, them outline them a little bit with the green. Give it some contrast. The contrast is what's going to make it stick out. So like right in here. Anywhere where you see a flat area or an area where water might collect and you might get some moss growing or something, you can do this. So that way when you stand back here and you're playing, you know, it looks like you've got some outcrops. And then that's one too where you could... Uh, Eh, I like using this one. Mainly because it works well with the shadows a lot of times. Uh, too far. But it's gotta it's gotta fit in naturally. Like that just creates a tiny little edge that you could not do just through sculpting. You couldn't get that edge just by sculpting. That's where you would use 
a placed object rock something like that anyway hopefully that was helpful I will try and put this one on YouTube so people can pay attention again remember um, advanced edit bunkers and regular bunkers don't play well together so don't do that um, also don't try to flatten the inside of uh, advanced edit bunkers you've got to use a, a raise or a lower kind of tool to pull that off um, but it it does cut down on the workload quite a lot especially if you're building an old style course of some sort or uh, one that's you know just got some rough edges to it um, I'm playing around with the idea of doing something similar to uh, Sand Valley in uh, Wisconsin and uh, I'm sure advanced that it would come into play on a, on a lot of those areas the one thing I'm curious about and I'm just gonna try it really fast now that I'm on here doing it is how advanced edit bunkers work on larger slopes because that would be something that would come into play on a course like that um, but with slightly smoother edges here hang on there we go just because I haven't tried this before uh, dun, dun, dun. Use this one just because I feel like it. Now I'm curious to see how these work. If you just put a bunch of them down together here. Daddy. Yes, dear. Uh, can I kind of, kind of? By the way, you'll notice that my my blue thing here. This is what I was talking about before. How it's floating way up in the air. So if you want to get it to stop floating, you got to back out of it and come back in again. Dad. Otherwise, it's always going to look a little funky. Dad. This actually would work pretty well for what I'm thinking about. Now I'm curious. Dad. Yeah, that would work quite well. Although... To do what I'm thinking of, you would also have to be able to do some pretty heavy-duty sculpting inside of these. You know, to get almost like <laughs> weird dune effects in that. Dad. I'm right here, hon. Can I have fruit snacks? Fruit snacks? I, I don't have any, baby. But we do have an in garage. No, they're all gone. Why? Because you ate them. I don't ate them all. Well, you ate most of them, then somebody else finished them off. Who? I don't know. Tell me. One of your older siblings, probably. Dad, can I go and get a snack? In a moment, I'll get you one. Just hang on just a minute, okay? Sorry, I'm just curious about something here that I was thinking about. how these trees are just suddenly it's really windy here I didn't realize it was so windy today <laughs> I think this would actually accomplish the look I was going for it would just take a lot of work you know what I mean if you're playing along and you you know you get kind of these sandy unkempt areas that I'm talking about here. And pop a couple of trees on here. There 
And if you want them to look a little smaller. Are there any smaller ones than that? Not really. You know, and then have a hole very kind of naturally coming in through here. More planting over here. But I think something like that could work. Do you guys think something like that could work? And then you could even do some tall grass there if you really wanted to get after it. And when I say tall grass, I'm talking like Arctic Fury tall grass. So I don't know if you ever got near the grass on his course because it's like this big. Which is fine. Just, you know, don't get super close to it, I guess, would be the thing. Well, let's see. I'm not going to rotate it. I just want to see how this fills in. And if you made it tall enough. Now, one trick I learned is that I think uh, that's terrible looking. I think global plants show up from a further distance, do they not? So, like, if you were to come in here. Yeah, they do. They can look pretty terrible unless you really, you know, get uh, finicky with them. Yeah. I'll have to mess with that a little bit. Anyway, sorry, that's just something I wanted to try. But uh, I'll make sure to upload this one to YouTube so it doesn't get lost. Because we did a couple of rock shelves. We did uh, advanced edit bunkers. We did a little spline action. Um, that's all we did. Anyway, that's enough for me. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Daddy, let me have a little pop.